Hi, we're here for your introduction to your new adventure. Uh, this is going to be such a fun time. We're so excited for you, but we wanted to show you a couple of quick things about the van. And this uh, link will be available the whole time you're renting it. So if you have any questions, you can rewatch the video. We also are going to have a book inside the van that goes over things also. But first off, this is where the gas is. This is where you're going to put your gas. Uh, we fill it up and we have a full tank. We just ask you to return it with a full tank. And it does not take anything below 87 octane or higher is what it says. So please do not use any anything lower than 87 on this car. It is just regular gas, not diesel, regular gas. If you are going to an RV park and you want to hook it up, uh, you can hook up cable right here if they've got that available. Right here is going to be your shore power where you can plug this in. This has to be twisted on. When you take it over to plug into the RV park, you may not need both pieces, but you do have to make sure it's a 30 amp only. This van only takes 30 amps. If the RV park has higher than 30 amps, you'll need the reducer and it will reduce it from 50 to 30. So um, then you just connect it like this, push it together, and this piece goes in to the park, to the RV park. Um, this down here is your propane. We will have the propane filled for you, for your convenience when you take off, and we will refill it at the end. You don't have to refill it, but if you're out longer and you need to refill it, this is the side. If you're gonna run the heater or any of the other devices that take the propane, you will need to turn the propane on, and that's turned on when the light is on. Uh, when you're driving around, please make sure you turn the propane off. A lot of the national parks will make sure that, will insist that you drive around with the propane off. It's the safest measure to be driving at any time with the propane off. So make sure before you take off that you've got your propane off. If it's not turned on, your heater will not turn on inside. Um, <coughs> This is your low point drain, and these are some of the exhausts here and here that can get very warm. So please, when you're parking, keep that in mind. This can get really hot, and so can that. So with the water, the city fill is when you're at the RV park. You're gonna hook up the water hose that we've got in here, the blue line that is drink for drinking water only. Um, that's gonna go right here. You do not need the water pump once you've plugged into the city fill. If you are going out and not at an RV camp, this is where you would fill the water fill. We'll have the tanks ready and full if that's what you want. Um, but this is where you would fill it in. If you're using this water, you do need to turn the water pump on and it's at the back of the RV and we'll show you where. Um, if you wanna come over here, if you have to dump the water, or the sewer on your own to dump the sewer before you get back to us uh, because you're going to be extended stay or something like that. We'll dump it for you when you return it, but if you have to dump it before you get back to us, this is where it is. So you would unconnect this black tube here, reconnect the sewer line, make sure this ends, and there's another attachment that goes down into the RV park dump station or Mavericks or other places have dump available. And then once everything's connected, you'll then pull this black lever first. That is all the sewer waste. After that is done draining, you'll then pull the gray, which is all the water from your showers and your kitchen sink. That's the gray waste. And then you can hook the water line up to this and a water hole. Usually they've got a water spigot at the dump locations and you can flush everything back out through the sewer line and make sure it's all clean. Put the hose back in the hose container and be on your way. So when you're all done and you're ready to put the sewer line back, remember that the gray line goes in first, then the black line. When you're dumping it, the black line goes out first and then the gray and when you're closing it gray first then black and unattach everything and put the hose back okay let's move on to the back of the rv 
if you have opted for the additional bike rack, please watch your head when opening these back doors. It's really easy to hit them. And also make sure when you're traveling or opening the doors, these racks have been slid as far possible to the center or they will hit the RV. So please remember to watch your head and make sure they're in the correct positions before you open up. On the back part of the RV here is our bathroom. Um, if you're going to shower, make sure the toilet paper is covered and um, so it doesn't get wet. Only use uh, RV toilet paper. We will provide some extra toilet paper in here for you that is specific for RVs. And we will also have your sheets in here, a king size set if you want to build out the bed to a king, and twin size sets if you just want to sleep two people. And then in here, we will have your blankets and um, pillows in this wardrobe. You can also move them and, and store your own personal belongings if you'd like that also. Um, now, a couple of things with the bathroom while we're here. Please use the shower curtain when showering. Make sure you cover the wardrobe and everything else. It's uh, not meant to be fully submersed in water. This is a medicine cabinet in here. We do have provided for your convenience shampoos, conditioner, body wash, and soap. Um, this is the bathroom sink. It pulls down, faucet pulls out. Once it's full of water, you'll want to slowly close it. If you close it really fast, a lot of the water will fall out. So just kind of close it slowly. Um, coming back over on this end is another water hose. This water hose specifically is for the sprayer right here. So you're going to pull this out, connect it, push it in, connect it, and you need to make sure the water pump is on and you can hear it restart. And this is to hose down anything outside, uh, equipment, dogs, people that you need to hose down before you get into the RV. Uh, there's a cigarette lighter here, there's outlets here, um, there's outdoor lights. Also, while we're in here, if you're in the bathroom, here's a light switch, and this is also for the fan. Let me show you really quickly. If you're in the bathroom and you need the fan, you're gonna push this handle straight up, it pops the vent, and then you can turn the fan on. And it will vent out the back half of the RV. And then you just push it back up. Make sure you don't travel with it up. Pull it down um, before you leave. And you're just going to pull the handle straight down. This is also a ladder. It comes in two pieces. This is the part that will magnet to the RV. And this is the other ladder. You shouldn't need the ladder. But it's there in case you needed to climb up on the roof or if you have um, rented the additional storage basket on top. Coming around this side, we've got additional outlets here. This is for a propane barbecue, if you guys are bringing one. Um, these, there's one here, and one on the other side for the awning. And we'll show the awning a little bit later when it's not quite so windy. If there is any wind, you cannot use the awning at all. It is very sensitive. It does have lighting that we've got turned on right now underneath it. But if there's any wind, you really have to retract the awning. And it can either stand on the ground or connect to the RV as long as there's no wind. Um, coming up here, you do have a screen door that is so convenient when out to keep bugs out. Um, do remember, it's not dog proof or people proof. If someone was to push through, they could push through and fall or break it. So please be careful with it. Um, we do have doggy, door, doggy bowls available, storage, more storage throughout. And this is where most of the kitchen um, will be stocked. Uh, there will be some other supplies throughout the RV. Um, there is the RV book that will be up there along with all of the window shades for at night when you want to close up. 
and lock the place up. While we're right here, let's take a moment into the cockpit and let me show you. Um, why don't you come around to this door? So if you're going to be using this once it's parked in place, if these chairs are facing backwards, the car will not turn into drive. It won't move into drive. You can't drive with these with either of these seats facing backwards. They have to be facing forwards. In order to re uh, re spin this around, you're going to grab this handle right here in the front and pull forward. It's a little easier if you're sitting on it, but you can do it without. And then this lever right here, this yellow lever, you're going to lift this up or push it, lift it up and it spins. and it will click in place. And then you can have dining space, workstation. There is a USB down there and plugs for your convenience. Okay, so once you're in here, this drives like an amazing van. It is so easy to drive. It does have a backup camera. Um, I wanna show you a couple of things. This button, unlocks the sliding door. This one will unlock the two front doors. This will lock everything. And then there's your key. There's extra keys for the bike rack. Um, Want to show you a couple different things. There is an auxiliary plug right here. It's a Bluetooth capable uh, uh, stereo system and GPS. If you are in here at night and you're ready to go to bed, this is the button that's most important. This will lock everything up so that you can go to sleep. So you don't have to lock each individual door. It'll lock the windows. It won't do it because we've got the doors open right now, but um, that will lock everything while you're inside. You do have multiple USB and different plugs. Um, this works pretty seamlessly. You do have the GPS available. Um, once you've got it on your phone, it can push it up through the stereo system. And then you will need to, uh, once again, reminder, return with a full tank of fuel or you will be charged um, the gas charge. And once this is running, once the car is running, if it runs for 45 minutes, it will recharge the batteries. And that is important. Once your batteries get down around 30 to 40%, you might want to look at charging it a little bit more um, because if you're running the AC uh, or um, the microwave, those do draw a lot on the battery and you will need to constantly be charging it. The solar panel will not be enough to keep it running. So you will need to start the car um, for about 45 minutes to charge it in full. Okay, your kitchen here. Um, here's your kitchen sink. Make sure that you remove the board before using it. Um, two burner propane. Once again, to light, you're going to push the button in, turn it to light, and then you're going to hit the ignition button. And you'll see the blue flame. I don't know if you'll see the blue flame on, but it is lit. And both um, light right off the bat. And once again, the propane has to be on outside, just at the bottom of the RV. And uh, the microwave is also convection. There's so many different things that it can do. Um, we don't fully understand most of them. While traveling, please use the lock on the refrigerator in case you come across some, it does stay closed very well, but we wanna make sure everything inside stays inside. So to move the TV, you're going to pull this pin down, unlock it, and then it pulls out. So you can pull out and watch it from the captain chair. You can turn and watch it while in bed, or you can turn it all the way outside and watch it while you're sitting outside. Um, it does have satellite TV and cable available here. You've also got a Bluetooth speaker, a remote, oops, 
<laughs> Let me turn this off. You do have an HDMI cable up here that you can connect to a laptop to stream movies. Um, you can also use the USB up here. There's an outlet to keep it charged. There's a um, remote and a Bluetooth speaker all inside here. Um, let's talk about the batteries for a moment and the heater system. Most everything, all the components you're going to need are going to be right inside the door. This is your heater and this is your air conditioning and all your electrics. So let's start with just the heater right now. Push on the middle button to bring it to life. The flashing van is your heat inside the van. It gets really hot really fast. You don't need it set very high. It's a really small space and if you close the bathroom doors, it keeps it really nice and warm in here. But it will kick on and off uh, if you set it. So I'm going to push it while it's flashing, I pushed it, and now I can set the temperature, and I want it to be 56 while we're sleeping. So I'm going to push it again, and then you can even go all the way down here to a clock, and that will set it, let you allow it, the heater to click on at a certain time. Um, I'm going to go back here because I don't want it on, and so now I'm going to turn it back off. Heater's off. Now I want the water temperature up. There, if you're going to take a shower, there's a couple different modes. We've got eco, and that that's going to. Hold on. There you go. Here's your main home page for everything on this component. When, this is your main home page. You can use it as a Google search. Um, but this is a little app. This little RV person right there, and this controls everything electric in the. RV. You can look at the tanks. This is the water level. Gray is the water that that you've used for your sinks or for your showers. Black is uh, salt waste from the toilet. And those are the levels of water that you've got going on here. These are your lights. You can have them all on or you can click them and all off. This is your climate. The upper temperature is the temperature outside. It's 57 outside. Inside is 70. You can turn your water pump on and off. You can set the AC. Um, it's set to 70. It's saying it's 84 inside here. So we don't necessarily need the um, AC at this point. If, whoops, if you get lost, you can always hit this button and come back here. Now, these are your control panels on the side. Let's start with the water. You can turn your water pump on. If it's going to be uh, below 40, we ask that you turn the tank heaters on at night or while you're out. Uh, the tank heaters are going to keep the water tanks um, heated so they do not freeze. That is very important. Please turn the tank heaters on if you've got it out and it's going to be below uh, 40. This is your awning to extend it and retract it. Again, only use the awning when there is no wind. Um, this is the climate control. You can heat or turn the fans on. Once again, this is the heater. You're not going to see a heater option here. It's only here. These are your lights. You can dim the lights. Um, you can make them bright. You can just turn one off. You can turn the kitchen off. So you can go through them all. The puddle lights are out, um, are down by the sewer drains and the steps. The outside lights are um, along the awning and the, I don't know, it's got its own awning, are out in the back. This is your battery system, your auto generate, um, your start generator, stop generator, your propane. That's if you're to add another tank. You won't have to do that. And then once again, here's your vents. If you want to raise the, uh, the um, vent so that you can get fresh air. Once it's fully opened, you can turn it on. And by just opening a door and turning on the fan, that helps a lot. It won't vent very well if you do not raise this cover. Uh, it won't be able to suck any warm air up and out of the actual van. And then just back to the home page to see the main one. Down here at the bottom, let me open this door so that 
Oh. You should never turn this off. This is your main power. You turn it off and you won't have any power to the unit. Um, this little button right here will tell you the state of the battery. And as you keep going through, that'll tell you how many hours you have left, the amps that you're using, the volts that are available, and we have 23 hours left of battery. This is the inverter. You should not have to touch that. And this is going to show you when the solar panel's working. If you are parking it and you want the solar panels to recharge and you don't have to use the car, you will need to park it where it's not shaded. The solar panel on the roof has to see the sun or it doesn't work. Um, and you don't need to worry about the drain clean out. Um, in here, on this side of the bed is more storage. If you've purchased the adventure pack, you're going to have the chairs and the picnic blanket and everything else. But these are the tables right here. And the table legs are underneath the camp chairs. I want to demonstrate those really quickly. This is the part that's going to go in the bottom. You're going to click it into place. Maybe. There we go. Click it into place and you have to close it. It says open or close. You have to close it and lock it in place. Pull the table out. We can go ahead and close this. Table. And it will fit right on. So we have sheets in the wardrobe for either two twin, two twins, or one king. And if you're having the two twin options, you can, by pulling this, incline the head or lifting it all the way up on both sides and dropping it to recline them both back down. Now let's say you want to make it this a king size bed. You're going to come over to this side underneath the entire bed. You're going to slide it over to this side and put the pin through the mechanism through the leg like that. Once that's in place and you've got both all of the pins in you are going to connect the tabletop down here and put it on the leg like so. And once you've got them all connected, you're going to bring these back cushions, un-Velcro, and that becomes the middle part of the bed and it makes a full king size, and you can place the king size sheets on. Okay, to quickly show you, there are two seat belts on this side of the RV, and two seat belts on that side of the RV. For any guests that will be traveling, they will be tucked behind the cushion if they are needed. In the bathroom, you will want to add a little bit of water just a little tiny bit before using it, and then close it, push down to flush completely. A couple of things, when you're in bed, they have reading lights. You push in on the center, it turns on, push out, and again, it'll turn off. Same with this light. These are for your convenience while you're laying down in bed. They do have shades that pull down on the side and then lift back up. You do have magnetic shades for the driver and passenger doors and a Velcro one for the slider. Also magnetic shades for the back bathroom windows.